Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today I've got two iPods, and these are the old 30 gig iPod videos. I absolutely adore these, really quite useful. I know they don't seem to fit in today's modern life where we've got everything running off smartphones, but it's nice to have a device that just does one thing, does it really well, and it's a great form factor because it really it fits well in your pocket. You know you've got it, it's got one purpose. I always uh, use Rockbox on the iPods now because that suits me better. I don't have an Apple or any real inclination to have uh, an Apple type account. And something that's wrong with these devices is that the actual audio doesn't play on this. I was going to show you this with this speaker, but I've actually let the batteries die on this and it's not really going to show you much. But just to give you an example, what happens is when it's playing, if I squeeze very hard here, I actually get a bit of sound. So it sounds like there's some sort of dodgy chip in there. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook up this speaker in a moment and show you that. But before I do, I've got another iPod here and this one, although it looks a little bit scuffed, it was this one it has got the original Apple firmware I believe. Oh, no, it's actually, no, this is a Rockbox one as well. And uh, the issue with this one is that the battery now has become so low when I try to charge it, it won't charge anymore. So I think the battery itself has become deadified. So I'm hoping between the two we can get at least one working one and possibly if we're really lucky we can end up with two working ones um, if I can get a battery for this one. So I think I'm going to have a look inside here and see if there's any way I can recover this chip. So first things first, I'm going to get a battery for the speaker so we're going to see what it sounds like now. Section one of... Okay, right. So that was, uh, for a second I thought there was nothing wrong with this, but clearly there is, because you can see now... For more information... If I flex the case, clearly you can hear the sound stop playing. So that's something we got to solve. And if we take the other one now, I'll just hold the unit on. There's nothing, this is dead. So. Let's see if we can get into one of these. Now, I've dropped the one of these before and smashed the screen. If I recall, it's really a quite a painful way of getting in. It's a metal can that's basically pressed all around. And this is something, if you've got one, you really want to get a nice spludger for. I don't have a spludger to hand, just a screwdriver. So I'm going to try to prise my way in. There we go. So you can see I've got a lip under there and I'm just going to work my way around the case like that. Okay, so that's that half done. Let's go around to the other side. Might need to take some care here. You can see there's some ports. We don't know how these are connected. Uh, I can see they're on it, their own PCB, so that's fine. Okay, I think that's everything. Nice and gently. Let's see what's inside. So there's two ribbon cables. One is the battery, and the other are the remaining ports. So what I'm going to try to do is disconnect the battery one here because that's less likely to give us grief. There we go. See, we can fold it over. How cute. So there's the battery, there's the hard disk. Let's turn it upside down so we can read the battery. It's a 6160229. Now if this hard disk can come out, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that cute? What a lovely little hard disk that is. You can see it's got a ribbon connector underneath. So theoretically, we could take this other iPod and just swap the back for now as a test to see if that one powers up. In fact, I think I will. So we'll just push that out of the way. Let me open this one up too. This one, as far as I know, hasn't been opened up by me see if the procedure is exactly the same. Yeah, pretty much. Let's 
Oops, a bit crunchy there. You really don't want to damage anything at this point. If you can avoid it. These must be classics now. I remember they were quite expensive uh, when they came out. They definitely were not a cheap unit, and I can see why they're made very well. Okay, same sort of thing inside. Oh, it looks different though. <laughs> Appears to be a lot of sand and gravel and grit in here. There we go. Different looking battery. Totally different looking battery. And I said a bit of grit and sand. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to grab my trusty brush. Let's just give this a dusting. We don't want any of that getting in any other workings. So what we can do is if we can imagine the battery from this one is hooked onto there, which way around that will be. In fact, it's going to be something like this. Let's see if we can coerce it into the socket. Might need my trusty tweezers for this. Nope, did it. And there you have it. So we don't know if it's the charging circuit in this or just the battery. Frankly, it looks like it may be an aftermarket battery because it's a very odd looking unit. There's no markings on it at all. using my trusty meter here we can see if there's any sign of life in that battery at all not quite sure what the pinouts are but let's see what we can see here 2.6 volts and then for the one that's working Four point one six volts. So whether or not this can be saved, I don't know. So just to conclude, we know we can get a new battery for this one and it will be fine. So there's not really much playing going on here. We'll just leave that alone. I'll try to get a new battery and that one will be fixed. No problem. So this is the real main one though. We know that when we're flexing the PCB, the sound is coming in and out. So we just take this hard disk out. Ah, there we go. The ribbon connector's got a bit of glue on it, so it's a bit sticky, so be careful. So look at all the loveliness there. Big Broadcom chip, could that be the processor here? A bit of flash, perhaps? Quite a lot going on in a iPod, really. No wonder these are expensive. There's a lot of small microelectronics going on. And this is the screen module. If you've ever had to replace a screen, that's the bit you'll normally have to dig out. And you can see, just to show you, when you need to do it, you need to prise this bit off and you'll separate the acrylic bezel from this metal titanium chassis so you can pull the screen module out the top. That's actually quite an easy job. If you find a broken iPod video, or one like this, I'm guessing, um, I've only ever had iPod videos, there's a good chance you'll be able to repair that screen. So in terms of components though on here, There's not many components that are actually, could be the fault really. These three here look like they're actually bonded down. You can see this black outline. So I'm suspecting potentially it's this region. Now I could use a hot air blower, but then the hot air blower stands to damage 
one of the plastics here and possibly this very delicate membrane PCB unit. And this, this board here is very interesting because it's like a chip on a membrane. So it makes me think that this is probably a, some sort of personality chip, maybe a firmware. So if I really want to do this properly, I'm going to have to prise this apart and actually get as much of these bits that can get damaged out of the way. You can see there's a load of screws here. Do I want to do that? Mm, or shall I risk, risk it? I think I'm going to do it. These screws are tiny, you don't want to lose those. So that's the first three, then the next three. So if you're actually going to change a, a screen on one of these, you can just keep taking it this far. Okay. So now we have to get the acrylic off the titanium part. There we go. You don't want to get any fingerprints on that screen. So there's your button and your OK. Remember, it's a capacitive touch. So this area has got the capacitive touch system on it. So you can see that's hooked on there. That PCB, there's actually leaf springs on the screen itself on this area that clicks. That's the clicky part. So it's got two loads of technologies. Okay, so just trying to work out how to get the screen out. for some tweezers. Okay, so there's your screen, complete with fingerprints on it now, to be, wipe those off. This unit is severely bonded in. There's no way I can get this out. But at least now I can see what this is for. This is actually the driver for the capacitive touch. The chances of me getting that out are really quite rare. I think that it's this is almost a standalone unit at this point. I mean, I might be able to just prise this out gently. But it's actually got bonded onto this metal frame certain things. So I'm guessing the, it has to ground itself off this frame to work properly. So when we're flexing the screen, we're, we're, we're moving this area around, we're putting pressure on these. So I think it, I, I genuinely think it's these chips. So I could try having a blast of those. Let's try to just, let's just take it off. Let's have a go. If I break mine, just, you don't go ahead and copy me. There 
we go. Look at this. See, it's so easy to break if you're not careful. I'm going to zoom in on that. See how this is bonded. See there? It's actually bonded onto the metal of the screen and it's so easy to rip it there. And if you rip this ribbon cable, you're not repairing that again. That's gone forever. There we go. So we're off the chassis completely. So my next stage here, I'm just going to undo the capacitive touch module altogether. Don't want that. It's got it's glued as well. Crikey. This has got very limited teardown potential. In fact, I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to try to make sure I don't go anywhere near it with my heat gun. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply heat to these chips until I think that the solder's melting on it, taking a lot of care not to dash this side here of this PCB and this plastic, these plastic connectors here, especially the hard disk one. And uh, hopefully that will either fix it or completely ruin it, one or another. Let me get the heat gun. Okay, we're back. Right, so I have the unit here. I've got it on a piece of metal. I'm going to be heating this region here. So I'm probably gonna turn it in a way that allows me to, oh, so tricky. I'm trying to work out the best way to blow the air. No matter which way I blow the air, I'm going to be hitting it on some of these components. So I think I'm just gonna to have to just keep it cool, relatively, sorry, not keep it cool, but keep the flow low. Let's just dive in. So I've got my flux pen here. I'm going to put some flux on these components. There we go. And with my heat gun now. I'm going to turn it to maximum heat and keep the, the flow very low on it. You can hear the flow is not can get even lower. So I'm just keep working the, the nozzle, trying to keep my eyes on all of the other bits that I don't want to touch. It's very hard to see when it's ready, but you're looking for a slight shininess. You'll notice the components, the slight shininess. And if you get some solder, and I've got a piece now in my hand, you'll notice the solder itself will actually melt when the areas reach the temperature you're looking for, because you're clearly looking for a melting point as well. The fact that the flux is still pooling. Oh.
Okay, so I can actually see some of the chips blowing now. So I'm going to turn off the heat. It's actually blowing cold air now, so we'll just let that cool down slowly. So we took that up to uh, melting temperature and now we're just letting it back down again, nice and cool. You can tell it's not been overheated because we still have pools of flux on top of those ICs. That should do it. All that's left now is that we clean up the PCB and reassemble it all. The iPad's all assembled now, it's all basically working uh, functionally, however, part, still no sound. I've had a poke around here while it's running, but it's just nothing at all now, so I think I might resign this to the parts bin, perhaps use it to replace this one because this is a bit rough, and also of course this has got the NAF battery. And uh, Maybe one day I'll revisit this in the uh, future if I can find another PCB for it, but uh, unfortunately that's it really. If you're just about replacing the screen, just take a lot of care when you're putting these PCBs in and make sure they're pushed home, this ribbon connector, um, and try not to rip any. As ever, thanks for watching.